The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic and Clearview Cyclones. On today's show, we're going to make a critter for my little critter. High five. All right. Oh, good paint. Okay. Hit it! It's hard to believe that in just a few months, my son is gonna be three years old already. Now, he loves coming in the shop, but usually he just runs around in circles, plays my drums, and watches cartoons on YouTube. So I decided, you know what? It's probably time for him to put a project together. Now, he's still a little bit young to use any sort of cutting tools or anything like that, but we can certainly assemble a project together that he could really get the pride of craftsmanship and building something himself. And if I can instill that early, then I think I've done my job as a father. There's a few other things I might need to do as well, but that's an important one. So what we're gonna build today is this little cricket. Well, I guess it's more of a grasshopper, whatever you wanna call it. As you can see, it's pretty much your classic wooden pull toy. As the wheels move, it moves the legs. Right, a lot of fun for a little kid to pull this around or a big kid like me. So it's 100% wood construction, not a metal fastener to be found on this thing. And you can make most of it from shop scraps. And some of the parts are actually pre-made that we bought from the craft store. It's just a whole lot easier for certain pieces here. And uh, speaking of the pieces, let me show you exactly what you're gonna need to build this little grasshopper. The main body is eight inches long by three inches wide by an inch and three quarters thick. The skinny legs are five inches long by three eighths of an inch wide by three eighths of an inch thick. The fat legs are four and a half inches long by one inch wide by 11 sixteenths of an inch thick. The wheels are pre-made and measure two and a quarter inches in diameter. The axle pegs are also pre-made and measure seven thirty seconds of an inch in diameter by one and a quarter inches long. The axle shafts are made from three eighths of an inch dowel rods. And some optional fun stuff, including googly eyes, pipe cleaners, bells, some string, and a spool. Draw the shape of the body onto the body blank and make marks for the various holes as well. Cut the shape at the bandsaw or with a jigsaw and then clean up the rough edges with a sander, file, or sanding block. Drill the 3 eighths of an inch holes for the wheels all the way through the body. Be sure to back the workpiece up with a piece of scrap to help prevent tear out. Now drill the 7 32nd of an inch hole for the leg attachment. In case you don't already have the marks in place, locate them 4 inches in from the front and an inch and a half up from the bottom. This is a non-through hole that gets drilled on both sides. As a decorative treatment, the body receives a chamfer all the way around. As an alternative, simply break the sharp edges with sandpaper. To cut the dowels to length, I install them with washers in place as spacers. With one end flush to the outside of the wheel, mark the other side with a pencil and cut it to length. You can use the first one as a gauge for the second dowel. Now drill a 7 32nd of an inch hole into the rear wheels in the thickest part of the outer ring. The skinny legs are cut from 3 8 of an inch stock to a width of 3 8 of an inch. The length is 5 inches. The thick legs are cut from 3 quarter inch stock that I plane down to 11 16 of an inch and cut to 1 inch wide and 4 and a half inches long. The skinny legs then receive a 7 32nd through hole a quarter inch in from each end. The fat legs receive the same hole 3 8 of an inch in from the edge. Using a French curve, I draw a drumstick shape onto the fat legs and cut them to shape at the bandsaw. I cut the straight portion using the fence and a stop, and then freehand the curves. The ends of all the legs are then rounded at the sander, and each piece is given a small chamfer. Now after a quick dry assembly, I could see I need to trim the axle pegs that go into the wheels. Looks like I need to take off about a quarter inch. The ideal fit here is one that bottoms out and leaves just a little bit of wiggle room between the leg and the wheel. A quick test run confirms that everything is working properly. Now if some of the movable parts feel tight, grab your drill bit and ream the holes a bit to loosen them up. If you want to embellish your grasshopper, drill some holes for the antennae and insert a couple of pipe cleaners. And if you plan on making this a pull toy, drill a hole near the front of the body for some string. The string will be pulled through and tied in a loop. At the other end, a small wooden spool will make a great handle for little hands. Now, of course, I sanded all of the pieces so they're safe for little hands, and I've collected the parts here into a little kit. And I've actually got two of them because Mateo has a friend who's coming over to help. So bring on the kids. Yeah. 
After painting, of course, the kids lose interest and it was up to the dads to finish the assembly. If you have paint in the holes, make sure you clean them out with a drill bit first. The glue up starts with the wheels. Just put some glue on the end of the dowel and insert it into one of the wheels. Be sure to wipe away the squeeze out. Insert the dowel into the hole and then glue on the other wheel. For the rear wheels, orient the holes 180 degrees from one another to give the grasshopper a more realistic leg movement. Now put a little glue into the leg hole in the body and attach the leg. Use a toothpick to apply the glue and be sure the leg still moves after inserting the peg. Now put some glue into the top fat leg hole and attach the skinny leg. The skinny leg should move freely. Next, put a little glue into the wheel hole and insert the peg through the other end of the skinny leg. Let the glue dry and give it a test run. Now it's time to bring the kids back to apply the eyes, the antennae, and any other things they want to adorn their grasshoppers with. Well, Mateo and his little friend had a great time putting together their grasshoppers and they were playing with them all night long. So these are definitely a crowd pleaser. And you can see we've already got some wear and tear on there from the concrete in the backyard, but ultimately a good toy should look like it's been used. So I'm pretty happy with the end results. Now, there are a couple things that you can do to improve the performance of something like this if you notice that the, the pieces are sticking or it's not moving as smoothly as it could. The first thing you may want to do is use a clear coat on this. You'll protect the paint and it'll make it easier for some of these moving parts to slide past one another. And speaking of which, you may want to apply a little bit of wax to the moving parts to let them go a little bit smoother. And finally, because you have a lot of spacing issues here, uh, where if the leg moves out a little bit or the wheel moves out a little bit too far, things may lock up a little bit. Uh, you may want to start using washers here, and the washers will help keep the spacing between the body and the wheels, and then also between some of these parts, which we have a little bit of wiggle room, and we need that. So if you have a little washer there, that's gonna help a lot. Uh, but it's up to you whether you want to include metal washers in your uh, final project. Now the final thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of CA glue to the bells and also to the knots and the pull string just to make sure these things don't fall off or come apart. Now just a quick safety disclaimer, now, I don't make any claims whatsoever as to the safety of this toy for children. Uh, we live in a very litigious world these days and unfortunately I've got to cover my butt by saying that. But I think it's perfectly safe for my son, I have no problem letting him play with this all day long. But you have to make that decision for yourself and for the child you're going to give this item to. It's a shame we have to even talk about this. Anyway, my son had an absolute blast building it. He does seem to look at this thing a little bit differently than the toys that are made of plastic and, and wrapped in shrink wrap when they're presented to him. This is something that he had a hand in bringing to life and, uh, and I hope he'll cherish it and hopefully it'll make it <laughs> for the next few years, we'll see. All right, so hopefully you'll be able to build one of these for a little one in your life and uh, it's a very gratifying project. Thanks for watching.